Hi there, my name is Brian Harrison and I am a cloud solution architect with Microsoft and these are the Azure 101s. In this video I want to continue my discussion around governance of which I already have three additional videos uh, tied to governance already. Uh, this one is going to be focused on the auditing piece of governance. So in the previous three videos I focused on security, organization management, uh, cost controls, things like that. Uh, in this one now, we want to take uh, the resources that are inside of Azure and understand who is doing what with them to see if maybe we missed a permission that we should have given or shouldn't or should not have given for that matter. Or maybe we missed a policy uh, that we should have put in place to help prevent users from spinning things up that they shouldn't or that they aren't uh, deploying things in quite, quite the correct way. Now you might be asking, well, that's great, Brian. How do we go through that, especially when we're talking about thousands of potential users inside of your Azure subscriptions? And that's going to be handled through a service called the Activity Log. So if we go to All Services and up in our search filter, we just type in Activity. You'll see that there is an item here called Activity Log. Now, Activity Log can actually be gotten to from many, many different places, and it's because it is one of the more important services, at least in my opinion, uh, inside of Azure. And it is free, it is out of the box, just like role-based access control and resource policies are. So let's go ahead and click on this, and it's gonna take us into a user interface that provides for searching, sorting, filtering against actions that have been performed inside of your subscription. Now this is a fairly empty subscription, so you're not gonna see a tremendous amount of activity, at least not within the last six hours. Uh, but if I change, say for example, the time span to last two weeks and click apply, this is now going to give me a much larger list of uh, all activity log entries uh, that have occurred now what activities are actually tracked inside of, this, of the subscription. Anything that is a create, update, or delete. So any modification anywhere to Azure resources inside of your subscription will be tracked in activity log. So you can see here I'm actually viewing keys. Now granted that's a read option but because it is tied to security keys and access keys that is something that we are listing. But you'll also see that I have an action here of where I created a Azure search service at one point. Uh, within the activity log, the basic pieces of information that you're gonna get are what was the action that occurred? Was it successful or a failure? Uh, how long ago did it occur? When? What subscription? If you happen to have access to multiple subscriptions, you can use activity log to view activities across multiples and then who actually initiated the uh, action. So in my particular case, I'm the only user, so it's either me or it's an application user that I've created. But using all of this as starting points, uh, we can actually, in some cases, like in the right search service, you can see that there are actually different uh, combined actions that bring together the overall activity. All of this data is exportable. So you'll see here I have a uh, export button. This export button will export all of this into a CSV file for you. You also have the ability to integrate your activity logs with Log Analytics. Now Log Analytics is not something that I have covered yet, <clears throat> but you can think of it as a log analysis engine similar to Splunk. Log stash, things of that nature, where you are actually bringing in logs from multiple sources and then you are creating reports, dashboards, uh, saved searches, things like that against those logs and across multiple logs in order to provide you a solid picture of how your applications, your systems are running inside of Azure. Now, in focusing on this user interface, uh, you obviously are going to want to be able to choose your subscription you're going to want to choose the time span. You're also going to want to potentially filter down to individual resource groups if you know exactly where you're wanting to troubleshoot or where you're going, going to want to look for activity that is considered to be abnormal. You also can pick and choose different event categories uh, because you will see many, many different types of events, not just ones that are tied to individual resources, but actually you're going to see things like service health events, you're going to see resource health events, auto scaling, 
policies, recommendations. Um, if you are using certain services that provide recommendations, Azure SQL is one, Security Center is one, uh, then you are going to potentially see recommendation events also show up here in this listing. And of course, alerts, once you start using alert management and building alerts, whether it's inside of the portal and using the out-of-the-box capabilities or you're using alert management inside of Log Analytics, uh, you are going to want to be able to view those alerts in multiple locations, uh, especially if you maybe only have a reader role and are looking at it at a more higher level rather than, say, a cloud admin or cloud architect who is trying to troubleshoot a potential problem. Uh, you can then specify, uh, once you've chosen a resource group, you have the ability to filter it all the way down to an individual resource if you are really doing serious troubleshooting. Uh, you can look for specific severities of events. <clears throat> you can filter it down to a resource type rather than an individual resource. So uh, Microsoft.VirtualMachine, Microsoft.Compute, Microsoft.Network, so on and so forth. Uh, if you happen to have an idea uh, during a troubleshooting time frame of when something happened, you can put uh, those things in. You can also put in specific individuals that you're looking for for who initiated the event. You can even filter it down to an individual operation type. Uh, you then, once you've created the necessary filters and maybe put in a full text query uh, piece, then you absolutely have the ability to save these. You'll notice that I've got... Uh, five different saved searches right here because all of these are clickable. All of these are saved searches uh, that have been designed and are very, very common ones for users to want to use. So things like errors. Let me only pull up uh, particular events or activities where the status has an error or the event severity has an error. Uh, you can only look for a role assignment. So in other words, you're looking to see if someone gave someone access that they shouldn't have been given. Things along those lines. You can, of course, also look for just alerts. Now, once you start saving searches based on these filters uh, and using your save search button here, then those saved searches will show up in this drop down here. Now, last thing that you might be wondering, how long does Microsoft keep this data around? If you are not pushing this data to Log Analytics or some other log analysis engine like Splunk or, or, or Logstash, as I mentioned, then Azure is keeping the data around for the last month, potentially even up to the last 90 days, depending upon your subscription. Most customers don't need too much beyond, say, the last week or the last month, but some customers want to be able to keep this data around for longer. Uh, if you do need, whether it's for archival purposes, uh, some special reporting that you're building, if you need this data to be kept around for longer than 30 days, longer than 90 days, then I highly recommend that you push this data to a Splunk, to a Log Analytics, because then you're now basing your data retention on those products rather than on just your Azure subscription. Uh, at which point you also now have an offloaded copy of all of this data. So this is the way that you're going to do auditing of the role-based access control that you've been applying or the policies that you've been applying at the subscription level or the resource group level and validate that your security is doing what it's supposed to do, keeping people out of doing what they're not supposed to be doing, but allowing people to do what they do need to do on a daily basis. This activity log is going to be a fantastic tool. The last thing that I mentioned is, I, I did say earlier, you can get to this from many, many locations. In addition to getting it directly from the activity log, where you're getting a dump of all activities in the entire subscription by default, you also have the ability to view activities for an individual resource. So if we go back to my home page, and we go back to the storage account that I've been using for demonstration purposes, you'll see I actually have an activity log item here in my navigation for this individual resource. And this, you're gonna see this just like the access control navigation item that I've shown before. You're gonna see this in every resource that you work with inside of Azure. You're gonna be able to automatically 
see a filtered set based on the subscription, the resource group, and the resource that you're working with. You then only have to choose things like the severity of the event, the category of the event, and the time span of the event to actually see something that has occurred pertaining to that individual resource. So for example, with this particular resource, you can see here that over the last month, uh, I did create the storage account. I've also looked at the keys. Uh, well, actually, an app, Azure application user has looked at the keys, but I also looked at the keys. Uh, things like that for this individual uh, resource. Now, you can see there's a right storage account. That isn't creating the storage account. It's actually putting information into the storage account or making a modification to the storage account, such as creating a container. I'll do a one-on-one -on, -one on storage accounts later uh, to go into more depth about what I'm referring to, but you get an idea now that in addition to looking at, at activities as a whole for one or more subscriptions, for troubleshooting purposes, you can absolutely look at the activity logs for an individual resource very quickly and very rapidly if you know what, of course, resource you're working with. So with that, I hope that this has been a good set of videos to help start the conversation around governance. As I've mentioned, I believe that governance is one of the most important topics with respect to Azure and with respect to the cloud in, in general uh, that every customer needs to have before they really start doing full-on, whether it's development or full-on production deployments into their Azure subscriptions. Get your role-based access control, your policies laid out, and then make sure that you understand how to audit those things once they have been put in place. Then you can start actually deploying out your applications. So I'm going to continue this one-on-one -on -one series, uh, and I hope to see you in future videos.